For this exercise, we're going to use SAP predictive analysis to actually help us make a prediction. In this case, we're going to actually see if we can predict customer churn for a telecommunications company. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the data set we've been using in class, this is a subset of the telecommunications company churn data set that we were using in for other software and software applications. Uh, this is about 3,500 cases uh, subset randomly selected from that larger data set. All of the variables have been imported into SAP predictive analysis from an Excel spreadsheet using the normal procedure. Um, when we open up our spreadsheet, obviously the one variable that we're really interested in is whether or not a customer churned, which is coded as a 0 and a 1. When we scroll over to the churn variable here, dv churn dependent, we realize that there's a bunch of zeros, a bunch of ones, there's also some nulls, blank values. Uh, these were holdout cases for later validation. For our purposes today, we don't want to include these as part of our analysis. So we're going to click up the little filter button here. And we're going to simply include just the zeros and ones, the no churn and churn values into our data set for our analysis. So as you can see uh, down here near the bottom, instead of having 3,500 cases, we're now dealing with 2,023 cases. OK. So now that we've prepared our data set appropriately for our analysis, we're going to move over to an actual prediction pane. <clears throat> How the prediction pane works here in uh, SAP predictive analysis is it allows us to draw from a series of algorithms such as linear and log logarithmic regression, decision trees, neural networks, clustering. So we can select from these various algorithms that we might want to use as part of our uh, prediction. We actually have a series of uh, data preparation um, tools available to us as well. And what we're going to do here is we're starting, this little circle here represents our initial data set we are going to first uh, create a formula uh, to prepare our data so we see here in the data processing area we have in fact a formula data preparation so we drag that over and we see that the data sets now pointing at the formula we hover over it and click in the bottom uh, quadrant here to configure the properties of this formula so what I want to do here is I want to take one of the variables that's already in the data set and Re and modify it using some sort of formulation. It's going to be a very simple uh, formula that we're going to use today. We're going to call this new formula um, uh, EQ days, I'm sorry, EQ underscore months. Now what we're really doing here is we're going to find the variable called EQ days. This is the number of days that the customer has had a particular piece of telecommunications equipment like their phone. And we're just going to divide by 12. Now it's represented in months, in other words. So what we're basically saying here is that we, we think that eventually we want to use the number of days that so, well, the number of months that someone has had their piece of equipment as a predictor of customer churn. The idea being the longer they've had their equipment, the longer the more likely they are to actually churn. So we can save and close this. We've successfully generated our formula. You can tell by the check mark. Next, we're going to actually create a filter of our data set. So we're going to grab our data preparation, grab a filter here, and drag it over. And it continues to chain on, pass the formula into the filter. And for this particular analysis, we want to set sort of a business scenario here, where we say, look, anybody who has been a customer with us for five years or more, we're not really interested in trying to understand their churning behaviors. Those are long life customers who have been with us for a very long time. Um, whatever's going on with them, we want to investigate them differently. Perhaps the reason they churn is fundamentally different from people who've been with us for a shorter amount of time. Said another way, we only want to analyze uh, people who've been with us from zero to 60 months. So down here in our row filter area, we're going to search out our months variable. Sure enough, we have a months variable here. And we can select from the range, and I'm going to select from a minimum from zero to 60. Keep only the cases that are from 0 to 60, meaning that we will only analyze people who've been with us from 0 to 60 months. OK. We can save and close this. Now it's been checked, so our filter's activated. Now, <clears throat> now we actually want to generate our decision tree. So we go over to our algorithms. Now those of you who have taken my class are probably already familiar with uh, uh, logistic regression as one way to actually try to predict uh, zeros and ones, if you will, churn or not churn. 
But in this case, we're going to use a slightly different tool today. We're actually going to use a decision tree. So let's go ahead and grab our tool here, the CNR uh, tree. Add on forward. And let's go ahead and click on our bottom uh, menu here, configure this. Keep our output mode as trend. And similar to how we deal with a lot of predictive um, algorithms, we have independent variables that we identify. And we have our dependent column. So first, let's set our dependent variable. That is our churn variable. So that's near the bottom. DV churn depth. And then for our predictions, we're going to keep a very simple model here. Uh, in this model, we'll simply use our new variable that we made, which is at the very bottom, number of days, uh, sorry, months that they've had a piece of equipment. And then we'll also use one other predictor, retcall. And retcall is the number of retention calls that this customer has made to our retention team. So the idea would be that if they've made a bunch of calls to our retention team already, we have some reason to suspect that they are ready or willing or are considering leaving us, so perhaps the more retention calls they make, the more they're likely to churn. So we really just have two predictors for our uh, model right now. We could certainly make something much more complex. Uh, we can look through the various other methods here. We'll keep all the default settings under advanced properties for our complexity parameter. If we increase this value, we'd have a less, uh, less complexity to the final model we get. Um, we'll just keep this as the default for now and save and close. All of our boxes are nicely checked. Seems the model's ready to go. So to run this model, we can go ahead and click Run the Analysis. Our results have uh, successfully executed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results in the Results view. So notice that we're here in our Results view now under the Prediction selection. It's easier to see if we actually click on the charts We'll see here, here's our decision tree. I'm going to see the little minus signs here. I'm going to collapse my decision tree entirely. So we start here. If I right click, I'm sorry, just click on the, um, the magnifying glass here. We start off with uh, 993 individuals who do not churn and 1,030 individuals who do churn. So in other words, our naive guess, if we didn't know anything, there's a slightly higher chance that someone would churn in our data set. According to the decision tree, though, there's ways to try to identify these individuals a little better. First, let's look at the just equipment months. So it appears that anybody who's had a piece of equipment for a little over 25 months is more likely to churn. So our initial hypothesis being that individuals who've had equipment for a long time are more prone to churning than people who haven't had equipment for very long seems to be correct. We do see, a, now we suddenly see a greater rate of churners than we did previously. So this adding in the equipment months increased the uh, precision of our estimate. And on the other hand here, we can look over here. And it turns out that people who have had their um, equipment for fewer than 25.79 months are more likely to not churn. We also see we have a little plus sign here implying that we can actually get more precise with our model if we, if we break down even deeper into this group. And it turns out within this group of people who have not had the equipment very long, we see that their, um, their, the ret number of retention calls actually helps us improve our prediction accuracy. And it turns out that if someone has made less than half of a call, or in other words, they've never made a retention call, they're much less likely to churn. And almost all of those, first of all, and that's almost the case for all our data. Notice that 96.34% of all the data of the people who have less than have equipment for less than 25.79 months um, do qualify for this group. However, for those people who have made at least one retention call, and again, it's not very many people. Notice we only have uh, 31 individuals in total, but of those 31 individuals, there's a large proportion of them who do in fact ultimately churn. Thus, although there aren't very many people who get, make calls to our retention team, it is safe to say that if they have made at least one call, and they've had their equipment for less than 25.79 months, they are, very, they are very prone to be likely to churn. So this is a very simple decision tree model. Um, as we'll see in class exercise and other cases, decision trees can become much more complex. But this nice, clean, simple version here illustrates the points uh, quite nicely.